my gosh, go in the hole! What's going on guys? It has been a while to say the least. I mean, yes, you saw the Wheel Not Ideal video, but I haven't really been uploading that much. I owe you guys an explanation. You're gonna get all that in this video. This is me explaining, you know, how I won in Scotland, kinda all of the above. But before we get into the video, I have something very important. Today's video is actually going to be sponsored by the Dollar Shave Club. Hey, do you use the Dollar Shave Club? No. If you guys didn't already know, the Dollar Shave Club is primarily a shaving company, but it also has you covered on shower, oral care, deodorants, and most importantly, shaving. This is just what I needed. The thing I have noticed between a regular razor and this razor is everything's just more smooth. With $5, you can actually get a really cool package. One, you get a weighted handle. Two, you get six high quality blades. Three, you get a three ounce tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter, which is transparent and it will give you more of a precise shave, but not only that, it will prevent ingrown hairs and will fight razor bumps. For a limited time, new members get their first month of the executive razor with with their bottle of Dr. Carver's Shave Butter. And guess what? It's only $5. However, after that, the restock box ships regular sized products at a regular price. In order to attain this purchase, you must visit dollarshaveclub.com forward slash GM Go. I need a sweatshirt. You do that every time you start a video. Hi. I'm Rob Lowe. Geico can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Actually, State Farm's not too bad. While Garrett's getting his hoodie, I'm here, and I'm gonna be talking about the Scotland trip. Uh, Scotland was great. I played pretty well, I shot 14 under. Um, I mean, it's just like typical golf that I do. Not 100% sure what Matt just said, but we're gonna dive. So, essentially, I was invited by Scotland Home of Golf to go to Scotland. And uh, this was like a month ago. Essentially what it was, was a nine vlogger golf tournament. There was me, Brody, Zach Radford. I'll list them on the screen. All right, so I get on my plane to go to Chicago for my layover. And right as I board my plane, I hear the, the, the thing, the intercom. What is it called? Anyway. The lady over the top says, the plane's delayed 30 minutes. And I already know I only have an hour to get my next connecting flight. So I'm like, all right, this kind of sucks. And then of course it gets delayed another 30 minutes. And at this time I already know I'm not gonna make my connecting flight. I land in Chicago, it's like 6 p.m. or something. My flight just took off to Scotland. And so I wait two, two hours in customer service just to find out that there was no more flights to Scotland for the rest of the day. So I get my like hotel tickets and whatnot and meal tickets and I'm in the taxi on the way to the hotel. Someone who had reached out over DMs named Steve called me up and he said, hey, I live in Chicago, come stay at my penthouse. And I was like, what the heck? So of course, you know me, real adventure begins with no plan. I was like, hey taxi, whatever the dude's name was. <laughs> Anyway, I had my taxi take me back to the airport, and then from the airport, I Ubered over to his penthouse, which was honestly just insane. These floors, they're heated. It was just really nice, and it was really kind of him to have me there. Honestly, it's so weird how sometimes really bad things turn into really good things. We toured the city the next day, it was kind of insane. Chicago is really cool. And then I get to Scotland the next day after not sleeping on the plane. I had two hours of sleep in a matter of 47 hours. I just was super jet lagged. Originally I was supposed to get there the day before, so I had time to just like get rid of the jet lag, sleep, then go out the next day and play. It's a two hour drive to Turnberry. We played Trump Turnberry the first day. This is the first time I've ever played golf on jet lag. I'm currently dying. I have five cups of coffee in my system. And you guys saw the video. If you haven't seen the video, you should check it out. Trump Turnberry, great course. Had a lot of fun. Surprisingly hit the ball very well for how little of sleep I actually had. I thought I was gonna go out there and maybe shoot 85. I can't remember exactly what I shot, but I definitely broke 80. I had some birdies, you know, it was a fun course and whatnot. I actually played better than I expected, which was great. Go downstairs, I'm gonna put these downstairs and I'll be right back, okay? Okay, he wanted the pan, he got the pan. Also, if you guys haven't looked at this hoodie, well, this actually isn't the current hoodie that's out. The current hoodie is more white, but if you guys wanna get this hoodie, link will be in the description. Yeah, we played goal and next, which was awesome. I can't remember how many Stableford points I had after the first round at Turnberry. 
played pretty well at Golan. I think I broke 80 again. Maybe I didn't. I actually can't remember. There's a video out of that as well. We only played three holes in my video and three holes in Brody's video, so it's a lot shorter. So if you guys want to watch that, you can watch that too. Golan was where they hosted, I think, the 2014 or 2015 Scottish Open. It was a lot of fun. Personally, I think Golan was my second favorite course that I played in Scotland. There was a lot of bunkers, like 124 bunkers on that course. Lots of cool views, right on the water, just like Turnberry. Okay, before we go on and talk about any more courses or show you any more swings, I need to explain exactly what this tournament was all about. It was essentially just for us to enjoy the Scotland experience, and it was truly a fun place. If you guys haven't been to Scotland, you should definitely think about it. The thing about this tournament was it wasn't actually super competitive. We were mainly there playing a stable for a tournament and there was different challenges along the way, like uh, clay shooting. We hit golf balls off of a castle, which was crazy. I'm not even sure if anyone else has done that. If you've done that, comment down below. <laughs> oh, Garrett. It was a handicap tournament, so everyone had equal chance. Yeah, just a bunch of different challenges that you could actually earn points. Golf was probably like 80% of the trip, and then there was like 20% of just enjoying the Scotland experience. We stayed at like local hotels, ate local food, all the above, just got the full experience. Also, we had dominoes like twice, which was kind of funny because we were in Scotland and we ate dominoes. Okay, the third course we played was actually the oldest continuously played golf course in the world. So there's this ongoing debate between St. Andrews and this old golf course that we played called Musselboro. So the thing about St. Andrews is there was a time period where no golf was played for I don't know how long, it was years, but essentially there just wasn't continuously played golf up until this point. They've never gone out of playing golf. It's been entirely continuous, so that's why they say they're the oldest golf course continuously played. We actually played there with Hickory Golf Clubs. If you haven't checked out that video, also made a video about that, but that was one of those cool little challenges that we played, and I also got points for that. We only played three full rounds of Stableford points. That was just a challenge. Okay, and finally for the important part of today's video, going into the last and final round, playing the coolest golf course I've played in a while, Glen Eagles. You gotta play it if you're ever in Scotland. Honestly, just insane, really beautiful course. It was more like a Kansas style course because most of the courses we played were links, but this one was like kind of like playing golf in the middle of summer in Kansas City. But going into the final round, I get on the first tee. We didn't really warm up. Brody and I went to the range, but we went to the wrong side of the range. So we only hit a few balls. We tried to go to the backside, but then we realized we actually had to tee off right then and there. So, but on the first tee, bottom line, I hit two straight shots in the tall grass and made triple bogey on the first hole. And Patrick made par. So I was instantly just going downhill. But after that, I was just like, we're just gonna go out here, have fun, hit some golf shots, and hopefully, you know, we shoot a decent score. So front nine, I think I limped through it and maybe shot like three or four over, whatever it was, and definitely got some points. I'm not really sure the exact number of points I got on the front nine. Going into the back nine, I think it was like still, still down some points, but I was playing better. I pulled a six iron on the first hole of the back nine, AKA hole 10 into the bunker, made bogey there. And then on the next hole, I decided to hit one iron off the tee because it was a layup hole and I hit a perfect like riser stinger in the middle of the fairway, grabbed wedge from there. I think I was like 110 yards out. I hit it, it landed, it was tracking, it was tracking, it was tracking. I swear I thought it was going in and it literally lipped out and went, I don't know, eight feet on the other side of the hole. I left that putt short, made par there. Next hole, hit it in the fairway, hit a nice, actually pretty nice seven iron that I thought I pulled straight left. Turned out it was actually pretty good to 20 feet, made that putt for a nice birdie. Onto the next hole, which was one of the hardest holes of the course, hit driver off the tee, pushed it into the right rough, hit four iron from there, Short of the green, got up and down for a nice par. Uh, next hole was a drivable par four. So if you hit it left of the front bunker, you can get it onto the green and possibly make eagle. However, I pushed it, hit it directly at the pin, just short of the bunker. It got stuck on a rake, so I was on the down slope in the rough, kind of short sided. Hit it to about 15 feet, and then Brody said this. All right, I am so confident in my putting abilities, but really, actually, I'm not. I kind of just want to put pressure on these guys so they mix their birdie putts. We all have about the same distance. This is how it's going to go. If one person makes their birdie putt and the other two miss, the other two people have to pay him 10 bucks. So you can walk away potentially with $20. Here we go. And right after he said that, I knew I needed to make it, considering I was going to make like 10 or $20 if I did make it. Don't want to put money on the line, man. Oh my gosh, he is Cashzilla. Made a nice birdie, and I think that put me to one under par. We get up on a par four that's kind of short, 
like 400 yards, but it's downhill, so it plays even shorter. I had a nice drive. I had like 85 yards, hit it to 15 feet, barely missed the putt for birdie. Brody almost drove the green on that hole. Next hole was a par five. I hit my tee shot straight right, and I was like, oh no, I'm choking. I was in the tall grass. I ended up finding my ball, which I was quite lucky to do because we weren't finding too many balls that day. Hit pitching wedge out just left of the fairway, then hit another pitching wedge to like two feet made a birdie. If I didn't find my ball off tee, probably would have made double bogey. Second to last hole, par three, just coming off of a birdie. I thought for sure I could possibly make birdie on the hole because it was only like 140. Got up there, hit pitching wedge just left of the green and got up and down for a par. And finally, last but not least, one of the coolest holes on the course actually, hole 18, which happened to be a par five, really short. You could kind of cut the corner and then hit a nice iron into the green. However, the tough part about this hole was all the bunkers around the green, the contour of the green. I hit my driver into the fairway. I had like 180, pulled six iron left of the green. I actually hit one of the best chips I've hit in a while considering where I was at and missed, I think, I don't know, five, six footer for birdie. So that would have been three under, I think, on the back nine. However, I shot two under. It was cool to finally hit the ball well. But turn. here's the final standings just so you guys know where everyone was at in the tournament. This is after Handicap was factored in. So obviously if you guys don't know what Stableford is, just watch any of my course vlogs that I did in Scotland and you'll figure it out. But it's a point system. It's not like stroke play or match play. I won with 112 points through the trip. Zach Radford got second with 108 points. Ryan third with 104 points, Patrick 102 points, coming in at fourth, Rachel coming in with 98 points and getting fifth, Matt 97 getting sixth, number seven was Ollie with 94, and Brody and Lloyd were at 91 coming in at eighth and ninth. There you have it, those were the standings. Other than that, it was just a lot of fun to be able to play somewhat of a tournament. It wasn't, like I said, it wasn't super competitive, but it still was just a blast to be out there. One of the things about Scotland that I noticed that the United States doesn't do too much with golf is pitch and putt golf courses. Like everywhere you went, you could see 60 yard holes and they would have like 18 holes of just pitch and putt. That was so cool. Turnberry had it, Glen Eagles had it. Even our first hotel that we stayed at had it like right outside of the hotel. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. I know it was somewhat different. It wasn't a course vlog or a challenge, but hopefully you still did enjoy it. And if you did, actually comment down below because I'm excited to start this grinding series up, going out there, seeing if I can beat my record, doing course vlogs, doing videos like this. Yeah, hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, be sure to stay tuned for the next one. That's how it all went down. Ooh.